Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you as in-depth as I possibly can how to edit a gaming montage in HitFilm Express. So here's the deal. I have had a ton of comments asking me for a gaming montage tutorial. And because every single commenter had a Fortnite profile pic, it had to be a Fortnite montage. So here's what's happened. I've already made a Fortnite montage. Of course, all the clips are pretty average. I just played one solo game and some Team Rumble just recorded for that video one day. So as you can see here, I've already made and edited that video. This is the project for that montage. I would highly suggest you check out the final montage. It's only a minute and a half and it will give you an idea of some of the stuff that we'll be doing in today's video. Today, I'm basically going to be recreating this video step by step with you. So sit down, relax. We're going to be jumping into a blank hit film project to completely recreate this. It's going to take a while, but I figured I would make it a super in-depth tutorial and go through the whole thing. Like all of my hit film tutorials, Today's video will have a difficulty rating. Today's video will be rated 3 out of 5 on the difficulty scale. It's an intermediate tutorial, so it will be assumed you know the basics of HitFilm enough to edit some kind of basic project. Alright, here we are in our blank new project. What is the very first step for creating a montage? If you ask me, it's the music. So find some great music and import it. The music I used for my montage was called Waiting by Unknown Brain and I imported it using the input button in the media panel here, of course. It's also important to know just how we put this music in the timeline. You might want to have it start from the beginning or midway through, it's totally up to you. Using this visualizer in the trimmer, it's easy to see where the waveform of our music shows us the different sections of our song. For example, in this clip, we have a short introductory part, followed by the male voice rapping, followed by the female voice, then the build up to the drop, then the drop and the main electronic chorus, and so on. When you're deciding which sections to include in your montage, it's important to keep in mind the effect of each section. For example, like the song, my montage is called Waiting. To highlight this aspect of waiting in the montage, I used the quiet part of the music in the intro to let the audience focus on what was happening in the video more. And when I play the intro, the very first play here is unspectacular, but it fits in with the theme of waiting and it sets up the scene for the montage. Then this snipe is put in with the start of the rapping to build up the tension, followed by the rest of the solo clips in the rapping section. In the female section, I have the finale of the solo win and the default dance, leading into the team rumble section of the footage ready for this snipe for the drop. You need to ensure that you're building tension throughout. Anyway, let's import our song. You can import your whole song just by dragging and dropping it into the timeline, but say you want a specific section. To do this, just go to the point you want to start in the trimmer and then hit I on your keyboard to set an endpoint. Then go to the end part and hit O on your keyboard to set an out point. You can also set in and out points using these two buttons here. To bring this trimmed part into your timeline, you can use these buttons here. But there's a much easier and more intuitive way to do this. You can simply click and hold on the waveform in the trimmer and then drag it into the timeline. Using the buttons like this is fine when your timeline is empty, but dragging and dropping it makes much more sense when you have tons of clips already in the timeline to work with, which you'll discover later as we bring in clips. But wait, don't drag your music in just yet, here's another little tip when you're creating your montage. Later when you're compositing, dragging lots of clips together and using speed and velocity effects, you'll have to create new video and audio layers to stack clips on top of one another. It's best to prepare for this and put your music on a separate track so you don't get confused later in the edit. Just right click on the audio track we have here and select insert track. Now do the same another two times, this is just so we have three spare audio tracks to work with. Then add a final fourth track and rename this one music. Now you can drag your music onto this track. Little tip, you can zoom in or out of the timeline horizontally using this slider right here and you can adjust the height of your tracks by clicking on this little arrow here and adjusting video and audio size. This helps when you have a lot of tracks. You can also click and drag on this area in the middle and expand the timeline if you want. Now it's time to start putting your clips in. You can put your clips in the timeline the same way that you imported your music, by selecting them, going to the in point pressing I, then going to the out point pressing O, and dragging it into your timeline by dragging on the actual video. At the moment I have this whole first kill in my timeline, but I want to mix it up with a little bit of some cinematics as well. Cinematics in Fortnite can be recreated in replay mode, which I will not go into in this video, but I'm pretty sure you can find free cinematics for Fortnite or any other game on YouTube or some other place online if you can't create your own. So I'm just going to break this clip up by placing this cinematic in between. I'll cut this clip here 
then add my cinematic in the middle and at the end. You'll notice at the end of this cinematic some trees pass the frame completely. I'm going to use these to create a wipe transition. So let's quickly talk about transitions. There are countless numbers of transitions you can make in your gaming montage. Spin transitions, shake transitions, luma fade transitions, glitch transitions, and wipe transitions like this one. But be careful because not every clip needs a transition. In this montage, I decided to keep transitions pretty simple with the exception of this wipe transition. I've made tons of tutorials on how to create transitions in HitFilm and I'll link them all in the description below. For now though, I'm just going to create a new composite shot out of this clip here by right clicking and pressing make composite shot. In this new composite shot, I'll create a new freeform mask using the freeform mask tool, open up the transform properties of the mask and keyframing the path for all those frames that the transition appears. As you can tell, I'm rushing over this a little bit because I already have videos on how to create these kinds of transitions. When you're done, make sure to go into the shape settings and feather out that mask. You can then place your next clip in and continue going in the editor once you're done. I've edited these sections in a similar way to the first one, and now we're going to talk about velocity. The speed effect can be used for velocity or syncing. In this particular montage, I've only used velocity on cinematic clips. Take a look at this one for example. It starts off fast, goes slow in the middle and then speed ramps up again at the end. You can also use velocity for the purposes of syncing. Here's a montage I edited a while ago. Check out the way that I've used velocity in this video. In that video, I've used the speed effect to make every shot timed to some beat of music. I already have a great tutorial on how to do this in HitFilm. It takes a lot of time and patience, and not surprisingly, the tutorial also takes a lot of time to explain how to do that. That's why if you want to know how to do that, you can check out that dedicated video. Today though, I'll be showing you how to create this more basic velocity effect, adjusting the speed to create this kind of slow motion effect with our cinematics. So let's go ahead and do it. Here I've got that snow running clip. To start changing the speed, search up for the speed effect in the effects panel and drag it onto your video. A quick disclaimer here, the speed effect in HitFilm isn't perhaps designed the best and there are a couple of ways to work around its quirks. I'll talk about those later though. Here's how the effect works. The number here is a decimal of the speed. 1.0 means that it will play back at 100% speed. 2.0 means that it will play back at 200% or twice the speed. And 0.5, for example, means that it will play back at half the speed or 50%. I'm quickly going to adjust these windows here so that we have a bigger controls panel. This will be necessary for our keyframing in the editor. Then in the editor, you can also click on display timeline in the top right hand corner of the controls panel. Clicking on the circle here at the beginning of the clip will activate keyframing and set a keyframe for this frame. Then you need to set a custom speed that is probably higher than one for the sped up bit at the beginning of our clip. This keyframe will ensure that at this frame, the speed is whatever you set it to be. Then go forward some point a little bit. Set the speed here to something lower, for example, one. Then you can go to some point that is an equal distance apart from the last two and set the speed back to maximum. If your speed property is too high, you might notice that the clip becomes transparent or appears black. You might have to adjust the property to make sure that the clip is squished in properly. This is where I have to talk about the drawbacks of this effect. When you speed up a clip, it will have a great big area of transparent video where there is no more media to fill in. If you try to shorten the clip to this point, however, it will shorten the whole clip as well and you'll be stuck with the same issue. Try it out and you'll see what I mean. So when you want to add another clip on the end of it, you have to add it to a video layer above to ensure you don't shorten the other clip. Alternatively, you can do this whole speed effect like I talked about in a composite shot. Let's try this out now. When you do it this way, you can shorten the composite shot in the editor without shortening the actual clip being shortened because that's all happening within the composite shot. In a composite shot, you can also RAM preview by clicking this button here. This is very helpful because HitFilm can simply not render out the speed effect in real time. In a composite shot, you can use this RAM preview to preview your work, make changes and then preview again. The speed effect also doesn't affect the audio. This is fine if you're just using it for cinematics like I am, but if you're using it for normal gameplay, you'll have to manually retime gunshots or search for sound effects online.
The rest of the clips in the montage are pretty simply edited, just being placed in the timeline. I've used a number of simple transitions which can be found in the effects panel. Additive dissolve, fade to black, cross dissolve, and also importantly, audio fades and audio crossfades. You can just drag these as effects into the spaces in between clips. Finally, I also put a letterbox effect on all of my cinematic clips to separate them from all the standard gameplay clips. And I also did some light color grading to all of my clips. This just helps them to stand out a little bit from the regular gameplay and other montages. I'll link a video to color grading in the video description, but just make sure to keep it light, especially in games like Fortnite, where the cartoonish art style can look pretty horrendous when the colors are pushed where they don't want to be. And that is basically it. I hope you found this video helpful. It took tons of effort, and I mean tons of effort to make this video. So if you found it useful, then be sure to smash like and also share it with others who might find it useful. I also encourage everyone to use the comments section of this video to compare montages and give each other feedback if need be, because feedback always helps. If you like this video, you can also subscribe to my channel. I make tons of hit film content and other editing and software tutorials. As always, I will see you in the next video. Stay shiny.